A lot of you saw uh, last year we put the uh, we put online for the first time in Ohio history uh, database of uh, public employees where you could search uh, uh, salaries and information on them. Uh, when we started that, uh, we knew it was a good step in the right direction, but it wasn't perfect, and we're always trying to improve it. Similarly, this is a good step in the right direction, taking the office to another level, um, but by no means is it perfect, and we'll be looking for uh, feedback from citizens and anyone else who wants to tell us how we could you know make it even a little better. So. Um, be open. Uh, be glad to take questions for uh, for me, for Seth, for Dustin, Ogrip. Uh, anyone wants to shoot me over. How would the public know if if uh, if that certain land that they're looking for is uh, up for sale? Sure. I mean, is there going to be like a for sale sign there on your uh, right computer? Uh, right. So they'd have to go to you know, they'd have to punch in that address or that parcel, and they would have to find who the uh, managing authority is. So, for instance, when Seth showed you the uh, Rhodes Tower was the Ohio Building Authority, uh, they'd have to contact. Um, they'd have to contact the Ohio Building Authority. Um, it's actually a good suggestion. Maybe some. Well, yeah, and one thing that we're trying to do it uh, on this phone number on this board right here, we have an email address that we've set up here in the treasurer's office, State Properties, at tos.ohio.gov, and we're certainly encouraging individual members of the public that have questions to ask us. We want to be a resource, and we want to help them. Uh, find the owner of the land and inquire about it and hopefully get enough information so that if they are interested in possibly purchasing a state-owned property, they, they know how to do that. But is there, is there a reason, to his question, is there a reason why, so if we're going to have on their list at Ohio Building Authority and the address, probably have a phone number and email for the Ohio Building Authority or the Department of Natural Resources as well. Yeah. Right? Even have a contact person. Right. Why don't we try to do that? Yeah, that's a good idea. Good, good question. What kind of legislative fixes are you looking at in all this? I mean, you say, you mentioned Senator LaRose. What what needs to be done legislatively to make this easier sure. for people to buy surplus property? Yeah. Uh, we've met with Senator LaRose and with, with some other legislators about uh, ways that we could streamline the process. And the hope is to uh, make it easier and, and possibly even engage others to help in the marketing of state-owned properties if we find some that are surplus. The first step is, is what uh, Jeff Smith and what uh, Ogrip is doing right now, which is getting this broad database of all the land and then uh, doing an evaluation of which ones are being actively used and which ones are possibly underutilized. And so we've been in talks with the legislature about ways to streamline the process for identifying which properties are being actively used and which ones might be able to be sold uh, and then uh, taking it one step further which, which might be actually um, going through the step of marketing those state properties. How, ma how many properties are in the database right now? There's roughly 36,000 properties that have been identified and provided by county auditors. Okay. And you don't know of those how many might be underutilized? You're still determining that? Is that? No, that is, that's actually not part of the development of the database. Okay. Uh, that's yeah. uh, OGRIP kind of oversees the development of the data. And, and what we're trying to engage the legislature on is, is that next step, which is trying to de deem which properties are being under, are utilized so that we can determine which ones might right. be potential to be sold. And I think that's going to take a little time. I mean, 36,000 properties is a lot of properties. Um, but you think about even if just a small percentage um, are available in part or in whole, um, even one or two percent, you're talking about it's a lot of properties. But my, my guess would be there's probably hundreds, if not thousands, that can be used, sold, leased uh, to the uh, to folks in the private sector. Now, there is a process in place for selling state properties. Right. It's just it's it's not a, a top-down approach. It's more of an approach where if an agency it's an all find, over the place yeah approach. finds a reason yeah, to try to sell a property, they might do so. But there's nobody that's pressuring them to do that. And and that's really what this where this comes in. And we're hoping that if the general public weighs in and says, hey, I'd like to buy that parcel of land next to my you know, next to my business, or, or to, so I can expand and put a new parking lot or put a new factory in, we'd like to be able to say yes, and there's an easy way for you to go through that process of purchasing land from the state. Right. And all of it, I think, falls under the umbrella of how can we generate revenue without raising taxes? And it's sort of the same debate that's going on with oil and gas exploration in eastern Ohio and, you know, in the Utica, the Marcellus Shale, and other opportunities like that where we can actually generate revenue without raising taxes, it's a win-win for citizens and for the state and the private sector as well. Well, sir, to that, um, I was wondering, this initiative, did that come out of a desire to raise more revenue and encourage uh, the selling of state land, or did it come out of, uh, there's, we think there's a lot of underutilized buildings, and therefore we want to streamline? Right, it's both. I mean, part of it is streamlining. 
So part of it is streamlining. Uh, part of it also is, uh, is is generating revenue. I mean, so I started off by telling you I was a city councilman, and, and you know I spent a lot of time talking with city councilmen, and mayors, and school board members, and all of us know whatever community you live in. You know, there's every year you see signs in people's front yards for or against school levies, for or against income tax levies, county health and human service levy, levies, what have you, and we know that the Local governments now do not have the same resources they did, you know, in prior years, just based on less coming from all, in the state and just the uh, tax receipts as well. And so, any ways we can generate revenue um, that don't, you know, without raising taxes, is a is a, is a win win. And so, from my perspective, the thrust is is twofold: it's both streamlining government, which is our job, and it's also doing everything we can to uh, generate generate revenue in a way that uh, does not raise taxes. Uh, I was also wondering, sir, um, where, uh, where, where did the idea from this come from? Um, my staff, you know, my, I have a strong team in here, um, and, uh, you know, they come up with a lot of ideas. Uh, some of them we end up pursuing, some of them we don't. Um, but, you know, we've got good people in here who I've charged with uh, thinking outside the box and thinking creatively about how government can work better and more efficiently for, for citizens. Um, it's my staff that also, you know, started to ask the question of why is this guy driving checks up and down I-71 when I can do banking on an iPhone. Um, you know, they're the ones who also said, you know, why don't we take these already, all that this already public information uh, of government employees' uh, salaries, it's already accessible to the public, why don't we make it in a, a way that's more friendly and useful uh, for, for citizens. So some things we pursue, some things we don't, but um, you know, this was one of those things that we decided was worth pursuing because it, we think net net it will be a good thing for taxpayers. So, so has this, please, yeah. has this tool been used in any way to help oil developers find land that they can drill on, and if so, who are they? It's a, it's a great question. I am at the tip of the spear, um, very passionate about aggressive and responsible exploration of oil and gas in this state. Um, I think it's you know with all the hyper partisanship and um, partisan bickering you see uh, in state capitals and frankly in the nation's capital as well. I think the exploration of oil and gas uh, in Ohio and throughout the country is one of those issues that can bring together folks of all political stripes uh, and you know and people of different uh, philosophies because it's a, it's a job creator. And it's one of the reasons why um, I'm a strong proponent of responsible and aggressive exploration of oil and gas. Um, that wasn't the thrust of this, um, but we have talked about how we think you know, this tool can be of use uh, to uh, folks who are uh, possibly looking to uh, you know, drill for oil and gas on state lands. Uh, frankly, those companies who are looking to do that, they have their own technology and they have their own tools, so I don't know the extent to which any of them may use ours, but if it is helpful, you know, that's a good thing for, you know, it's a good thing for our state. Um, the legislature, I think, did the right thing by opening up uh, state lands for uh, responsible exploration, uh, and my understanding is a lot of these private sector companies have the tools already to do it on their own, but if this ends up being an asset, um, you know, it's a good thing, and I guess it's a, it's, it's a bonus. So do you see this as a base, like as you were saying, it's, it can evolve from here, so absolutely. right now we see Ashtabula County natural resources, but maybe in the future uh, it could say three spaces available or something like that? It could say three spaces. I mean, I want, I mean, just in this conversation, for instance, you know, uh, his question made me think that it shouldn't just say Department of Natural Resources, it should say Department of Natural Resources with a phone number, with an email address, and with a person's contact name. I mean, think about how frustrating it is to call some government agency and you get put on hold and you get transferred four or five times or you, you call the 1-800 number don't even know where you're going and you deal with that same thing and you know sometimes when you're calling a bank or insurance company what, what have you um, so I guess my charge to my staff here is let's add uh, phone numbers let's contact each one of these agencies and ask the Department of Natural Resources, Department of Transportation who what is the name of the point person in your agency who deals with this kind of things and let's post their name and their number and their email on this website um, and you know that idea came up from him asking a question earlier, you know, you know, and I think this is how we'll develop it, is just by taking it to the next level and the next level and the next level. Um, but hopefully this is a good start. We think um, we've really taken to m many levels uh, uh, higher, you know, what was previously done in the Treasurer's Office, and hopefully we can keep doing that. Uh, sir, I also uh, switch gears for a second. Sure. I, I saw what you were saying about